All right, I'd like to welcome everybody out to the webinar today is uh, the 24th of March. Our topic today is communicating and inspiring coworkers. Um, we, uh, we're going to have a little bit of a change on our schedule next, next week. Uh, we're going to be changing things just a little bit around and we'll keep you posted next week. So look forward to the email that we'll have out there on that. Um, so uh, we've got uh, one of our um, SBDC regional directors that is going to be uh, delivering the webinar and the content today for communicating and inspiring coworkers. So with that, we're going to hand it over to Mr. Dave Nowak. Dave and I are up meeting with uh, an SBDC client up in uh, Driggs, Idaho. We've got we're looking out the window, and we can see the beautiful Tetons right at right out the window. We've got the most beautiful scenery here to do this uh, webinar today. Couldn't ask for a better scenery up here. Beautiful blue sky, um, looking up into the Tetons. So uh, with that. Uh, um, we'll turn the time over to Mr. Dave Nowak uh, with the um, SBDC here in Eastern Idaho. Sounds good. I'm glad to be here. I'm excited. This is one of my favorite topics. Uh, and uh, just by way of introduction, for those of you that don't know me, I have a tremendous background in business. Uh, I had an aircraft manufacturing company that we uh, acquired and then we took and got some of the top ratings in the industry. I've uh, been a building contractor, HVAC contractor, alternative energy contractor. Uh, I started and grew one of the largest pest control companies in Washington State before I sold that. And uh, for the last 20 years I've been working with the Small Business Development Center, at, or last 16 years, and I've worked with over 2,000 companies uh, one-on-one, -on -one, uh, sometimes for an hour or two, uh, sometimes for a few hundred hours. At any rate, uh, this topic here is one that I see as a missed opportunity. And I'm, I'm just going to start off real quick uh, making a couple comments. Uh, some companies, why is it that some companies go viral and others don't? What separates uh, mediocre companies from uh, the few that really take off and can make things work in ways that just mystifies the public sometimes. And another comment is uh, I think one of the biggest missed opportunities in business uh, is empowering and stimulating manpower. And uh, one of the things that we've discovered as time has gone on, most companies that, we, that I have seen and that I work with and as time's going on and studies bear this out, uh, they don't have a focused team and they don't have a focused approach to what they're doing. They think they do, but when you separate the individuals out, and we've done a few exercises, uh, we get out to where we'll pull management apart and ask them a few simple questions. What do you sell? What does your business do? What business are you in? And they almost never come back with the same answers. And it's a, it's a unfortunate so one of the biggest missed opportunities in business is not leveraging manpower and resources. And so we're going to cover a few things today that may give you some ideas. And this is just by way of introduction. It's not an in-depth expose on this topic today. But it's a very exciting uh, topic because if you can light your team on fire, it's amazing what you can get done. But there's some keys to it. And these are things that we've watched and discovered. And I'm, I'm going to introduce you to a book or two here that uh, can be of great benefit to you if this is if this topic's of interest. So what I'm going to do is just skip forward here. The purpose of this seminar is to help you to discover ideas on how to communicate with anyone, how to enhance communication, and how to inspire and motivate others to achieve greater successes for all. And before I get going here, uh, can everybody hear me okay there? Is he here? Can you hear him all right? You might be more off of so go she, she texted me and said it was, it was going good. Just okay. Lean in. okay. I'll, I'll just go ahead and keep going here. Uh, and I'm going to flip through uh, the next slide. Uh, what, uh, this quote I came across the other day, and I love it. Inspiring others. Most companies hire skilled people 
and motivate them. They try to hire people that they think know what they're doing and they're going to be able to help them get where they need to go. And then they try to motivate them. Great companies hire motivated people and then inspire them. And it's interesting, you, you, it's hard to teach an old dog new tricks, and a lot of times we try to hire people that have skill, but we find out they just don't seem to be able to get done what needs to get done the way we're looking. And one of the big first mistakes company make, companies make is not knowing why, clearly knowing why they're hiring somebody, and so they look for skill, and they miss great opportunities. It's a lot easier to motivate them, and I'm going to cover a couple things here in a few minutes that will help us to get to the point where we pick the right people to begin with. And so I'm going to get into inspiring others. Uh, why inspire? Uh, this is a great, phenomenal business technique that uh, is used by some of the biggest names in the industry. Uh, Walmart, Sam Walton started off that way. Herb Keller with Southwest Airlines, which became the most successful airline in, in U.S. history. One of the, uh, they weren't the biggest, they weren't, uh, but they were the most successful. Uh, and uh, other companies, uh, Steve Jobs, Apple Computers, Bill Gates, uh, it's stunning. They have many things in common that a lot of times smaller businesses or regular businesses miss out on. Uh, so when we inspire others, we can motivate them. We, it helps to build power. Uh, the more people feel inspired and uh, motivated in what they're doing, the greater the loyalty that comes into a company. We can create self-starters within our company that instead of just coming to, day, coming to work nine to five kind of thing, they come to work and they're passionate about it. You can build confidence. It helps to focus your team better and then helps us to achieve much greater successes. Uh, and one thing I want to mention is when we get into inspiring and motivating others and, and into the communication end of things here, absolutely everything you do in your business counts, everything. Uh, there was a study that was conducted of over 300 different major company leaders, and they found out that they had six major traits in common. Uh, they didn't have all of them in common. Sometimes they only had strengths in one of these. and. Uh, I'm going to mention a few things here real quick uh, about each one of them, but they're all very important. Uh, if somebody is visionary, and we're, uh, these, are ins these are inspirational techniques or inspirational uh, methodologies. Uh, if somebody's a visionary and people uh, connect with them, we can create a following. Enhancing is a great listener or somebody that has great listening capabilities and connects emotionally with others. Uh, another, and Oprah Winfrey fits in that category, for example. Uh, a driver, somebody that pursues uh, a goal, gets the job done, meets the numbers and gets things done in a timely fashion or on time. Uh, they're driven to accomplish and their results show it. Uh, principled is another major inspirational uh, technique or trait that they found with these 300 uh, key company leaders. Uh, it's a powerful role model when people are principals and they, they are trustworthy uh, and so forth. Uh, that is a big connection point. Enthusiast, and this is one that's interesting because most people think that if somebody's inspirational, they're enthusiastic and passionate about what they're doing and people just naturally gravitate to them. What they found out in the study is that while this may be a great trait, it's not one of the key ones of the six here. But uh, in this one, they exude passion, energy, and in both their organization, their goals, and their work. And then the last one of the six key traits that they discovered with these uh, other company leaders was the expert level. And when anybody has a powerful knowledge about an industry or expertise in what they're doing, uh, that attracts attention because others don't know what they know and they gravitate and want to know, how did you get to where you're at? How did you learn what you learned? What do you know that could benefit me? So these are the big six. And what they discovered was that the visionary enhancing driver and principled are the top four. Those are the four that were most empowering. And if you have more than one of these in your company or in your personality, 
and you develop these, you have more power. And by the way, the one thing I want to mention about this, everybody thinks that leaders are born, but uh, according to studies, every one of these things can be learned. And uh, so it's not uh, a situation where we either come this way or we're not. It's a situation of making a decision where we want to be and starting to work on developing these traits. And so these things are all things that can be learned and developed and enhanced. The other thing that I wanted to tie in, and I'm going to pull this together in the tail end here, is the communication end of things. And this is where a lot of us, once we have, uh, we figure out the inspirational traits that we want, uh, communication is absolutely essential. Uh, and why do we need to communicate? Well, it helps us to connect at a deeper level and achieve much greater results. And I'll talk about this more here. Uh, have you ever been in a situation where you uh, felt like you didn't connect with somebody, you're just not getting through, things aren't working quite right, how do I motivate my guys out in the field here, or my team in the office, or my salesman, or whatever, uh, and there's a communication barrier. And if we're not connecting, we have tremendous problems. Uh, and so uh, building trust is one of the key reasons why we want to communicate better. It helps us to achieve greater sales numbers, uh, it helps us to create successful outcomes, to foster foundation, a foundation of leadership. It helps us to better inspire others to share their true thoughts, and it helps them to understand their needs and their positions. It helps us to understand better when we understand their needs and their positions. Then we can communicate better when we know where they're coming from. Uh, networking to greater mutual advantage and then cultivating loyal, long-lasting, next-level relationships. And so when, by empowering our communication and taking things to a, a greater, a higher level, we get a whole lot more done. And I ended up doing this with a company that I had uh, where we were floundering. We were on the verge of bankruptcy. We ended up completely remodeling what we were doing in the company and communication and trying to inspire our team were absolutely essential or we were underwater. Within a year and a half, I took the company from bankruptcy to six-digit income, and I was working an hour to an hour and a half a week instead of 14 to 16 hours a day. And one of the critical things is to come up with a focal point in your company, which we'll talk about here in a few minutes, and then learning how to communicate with others and inspire them to take them to a whole higher level. One of my favorite books that I came up that I came across as I was going through some of the things that we learned, and I use this all the time, is it's a book by John Maxwell. Everyone communicates, few connect. Everybody communicates. We're always sharing and thinking and talking and communicating. But how many of us really connect at a deep, heartfelt level? How many opportunities do we miss because people aren't connected to us or they don't feel like they're network with us very well, or vice versa. And this is a very universal principle, and there's some phenomenal uh, individuals in history who are great communicators. One of them, and we've heard this before, if I was to ask you who who was the great president who was known as a great communicator, well, we probably had a, a few that were good. Ronald Reagan came across, Bill Clinton was known as a communicator, and so forth and they, they connect with uh, individuals. And the question is why? It's not a mystery. And so we're going to go through and review some of the techniques and principles here. What evidence do we have when we're connecting with other people? And uh, before I get into that, I'd like to make a comment. Have you ever had a time when you met with somebody, a uh, coworker, a spouse, uh, family member, a friend, or whatever, and you had a conversation one day, and in your conversation, it just felt like, oh, man, I just got a, a phenomenal bonding experience with that person. I just feel like I connected with them at a much deeper level. Evidence of a connection uh, where we're really getting through, sometimes the outer barriers and outer shells that people have are when they give us unsolicited appreciation. We have better communication 
uh, there's extra effort that they will put forward as a result. They're more motivated to do things for us or for others. It's a more enjoyable experience. It creates a deeper, long-lasting bond. Uh, it creates positive, powerful energy, and it helps to create synergy when we're focusing a team or our employees. We're unified towards a, a single focal point. Principles of connecting. Uh, when it comes to the principles, it's more than a natural talent. This is very exciting. And one of the reasons it's exciting is because if it was natural talent, I, I dare say that a lot of us would struggle miserably. But it's something that can be developed. And uh, it's something that you can proactively, intentionally focus on and make it happen. And we'll talk about this a little bit uh, deeper into the discussion here as well. But uh, it increases your influence with others. It goes way beyond words. Sometimes uh, things will show up in actions that other people do when we're connecting. Uh, it also requires energy. And the one thing that I absolutely emphatically want to make a point of today, if we're self-centered, self-focused on ourselves, we're going to miss out on tremendous opportunities. We cannot connect with others when we're in it for ourselves. If we reach out and we start helping others, and we reach way beyond our comfort zones in, in a lot of cases, and we focus on others first and foremost. That's where the most powerful energy comes from. When people think you care about them, uh, they will do a lot more to help uh, get where you want to go, especially when it comes to employees. So many times in business, we see this all the time, where businesses treat their employees as objects, not individuals. and. Uh, they need to get things done, and they it's and they lose tremendous opportunities. But if there if there is a way to connect with them, uh, and uh, help to raise them to a whole different level in your company, what could that do for your company? How much more successful could you be? Could it increase your sales, your productivity, your downtime would improve, and so forth? Uh, practices of connecting. One of the key things in in connecting is to keep it simple work on ins inspiring others and work on the techniques that are necessary. And we just went through six of them here, the six key ones that successful businesses utilize or have in their arsenal. And by the way, uh, Warren Buffett uh, in the railroad industry and so forth, when he speaks, people listen. He's been very successful and he has a following. Oprah Winfrey, she's a connector. She puts people at ease, she's probably one of the best interviewers of all time. Uh, so learning the practices of connecting are a power tool in your business. Uh, live what you communicate, be an example. If you're not an example, uh, if any of us are not an example, we miss tremendous opportunities that way because we become viewed as being potentially hypocritical or we're not uh, respected in the thoughts that may come forth and so forth. And another thing we want to do is it helps to create enjoyable experiences, or we create enjoyable experiences for others uh, if we're practicing connecting. Connectors also connect on common ground. So one of the key things connecting people do or connecting individuals do is instead of just trying to push our agenda right out of the gate, take a few minutes, uh, connect with the others, learn more about them. Who are they? What do we have in common? Have you ever got on a flight? or a train or you're some public transportation or gone to a meeting and you sit down next to somebody you don't know, what's one of the first things we start to do? We start to ask them questions and vice versa to figure out what their background is and what we have in common and why do we do that? Uh, very interesting. It, it helps us to uh, connect. That's a connecting technique. How many of us do that with our employees? We take time to, or our stakeholders in our company. Or do we just treat them as objects and just hurriedly move along in our company and we don't pay much attention? Uh, if we take a little time to connect, we can have great power. Southwest Airlines, Herb Keller, was phenomenal. He had an open door policy. He never closed his door. And when he saw people, he would meet and greet everybody and, and was always connected with them. And they loved him and they respected him. And that's one of the things that helped him to gain power and the ability to connect with others and to inspire them. Uh, 
there's three major different techniques that people utilize in life when they're dealing with things. Crash, cope, and change. Uh, some people, if things aren't going the way they want, they just disconnect. It's fight, flight, or flee kind of a scenario. They crash. They can't deal with it. They do nothing. Another one is they bec method is coping. They become reactive, or they may be reactive. That may be their MO. But the most powerful version of it is to go through change and develop the skills. And so in order to do that, we have to have a mentality of uh, proactivity or being proactive. By the way, uh, everything we're talking about today deals with attitudes, and it deals with decisions and choices that we make and which pathway we're going to go forward. Uh, and a lot of companies are dealing with proact or reactive approaches. They are always uh, trying to figure out how to deal with the next issue that pops up or the next opportunity instead of it being a choice and being proactive. So these are skills that can be developed. Uh, another thing that's critical, again, is our attitude. Where are we at in our own attitudes? Uh, they found in studies, multiple studies, that low achievers are preoccupied with security. They have a basic distrust of subordinate and those they work with. Uh, they avoid communication. They use policy manuals. And they're driven to a uh, letter of the law type approach. Average achievers care about production. Uh, they're focused more on status, and they listen to, to their supervisors, uh, kind of a sometimes kiss up kind of an attitude. High achievers, on the other hand, they care about others, everybody, their coworkers around them, their suppliers, the customers, uh, anybody who's a stakeholder, they pay attention to all those. And they care about profits. They realize that in order for them to get to where they need to go, profitability is important, but you can't just focus on profits and not others. You've got both of them going hand in hand here. Another thing that they do is they view subordinates optimistically. They listen to everyone uh, and uh, don't put individuals down. Principles of connection. Connecting increases your influence. It goes way beyond words. When we connect with others, uh, and I wish we were in person, I'd be able to show you this, but uh, if we say we care, but our body language are sitting there slumped back in the chair and we're not, our eyes are rolling around or so forth, we're not connecting. Connecting increases your influence. Everything you do goes way beyond words. The tone inflictions that we use, the body language that we have, the posture that we have, the way that we're dressing, the way that we're speaking, the tone of our voice, uh, they all have an impact, so it's more than just simple words. It's everything. It's the whole package. And again, don't focus on ourselves. Be what you want to hear, and then do the right things for the right reasons with the right attitude. And this checklist, if you take this uh, presentation here today and you go back and you start using this as a checklist, ask yourself honestly, where am I at with regard to these principles? Where am I blowing it in my personal relationships and my work relationships? What can I do to take things to a new level? There's four major components of a connection, and they found out in studies that you have seven seconds to make a connection. Visually, people will see and they immediately judge based off of visual. Uh, intellectually, emotionally, and verbally. So emotionally, is they feel your attitude. Uh, verbally, hear, we hear what others say and so forth. And these are the four key areas. And they all need to be dealt with, not just some of them. The five unpardonable sins of connecting with others is when we come across as unprepared, uncaring, uncommitted, uninteresting, or uncomfortable. If we have any of these things going on, we're shooting ourselves in the foot potentially and making a deep connection. What makes people listen? Relationships, these are things that people are interested in. If you meet somebody new for the first time or you meet somebody, who do they know that could help me out or who do they know that I might be interested in? What are their insights? What successes have they had? What abilities do they have? What have they learned? What skill sets have they got? And how have they lived their life? How have they sacrificed uh, for others? 
these are things that help to make people listen. Some of the barriers that we can have on a communication level and inspiring others is being presumptuous. I already know everything. I know what everybody already wants. That's presumptuous. Arrogance is I don't care what others think and I don't care what they need. I'm going to get push my agenda and what I want to get accomplished here. And indifference, the I don't care attitude. These are tremendous barriers that can pull back. Again, we can use this as a checklist to kind of go back. How do I really come across? If I was to ask my best friend and they were honest with me, what would they tell me? Uh, builders uh, are humble. They're likable. Humility means teachable. They listen. They, they're open. Uh, they're likable. They have openness. They're adaptable. And they're thoughtful. One of the key things that I would like to bring out in this information here uh, is purpose. This is one of the massive opportunities that most companies miss. They, if I sat down, and I challenge you right now, every one of you that's on this webinar, if you were to sit down and in 30 seconds to one minute write down your purpose and why your company exists, what difference you're going to make in the world, I mean truly, not just we build houses, but why do you exist? What are you doing for others? If you build houses, why are you building them for them? Drive your business with purpose. It adds value to others. And by the way, most companies try to come up with mission statements, or, uh, or a lot of companies will do that, not most of them. But when they do it, they don't drive it with purpose. And it's at a much higher level. It adds value to others. But one of the key things is if you have a if you were to take your company and you look at it and you separated everybody in your company out and you gave them an interview or they wrote on a piece of paper, what is the purpose of our company? What do you think they would say? Uh, if you're going to inspire others and you're going to motivate them and you want to communicate what the purpose of your company is and where you're headed, how in the world can we take our company if everybody's pulling different directions? And one analogy that I like to use is uh, Let's say that you take your top leaders in your company and uh, you turn around and you uh, put them all in a boat and you, you give everybody a paddle and they've got to paddle from one side of the lake to the other and you have a spot on the other side of the lake you're going to. What would happen if you put everybody in the boat without direction and you put blindfolds on them and you had one person that was coaching the boat trying to tell people how to paddle. What would happen if nobody could see where they're going? Everybody's pulling different directions. You would never go anywhere. And it's really sad. One of the biggest mistakes by far that I see most companies have, they do not articulate a clear purpose and reason why the company exists. And it isn't just building houses. It's far greater than that. It's, it's something we're doing for others. Uh, maybe we're building a uh, first-time homeowner homes and we're trying to help people get into them. Uh, and one of the reasons we exist is to create a home that's so inexpensive, easy to get into, that first-time homeowners or wannabe homeowners have a pathway to start home ownership or they've never been able to do it before. Maybe they're renting. So our purpose would be to help those individuals. Instead of just building a house, I've got a reason for doing it. So I challenge you to, to look at how you What's your focal point in your company is? What's your purpose? Figure out how you can come up with, and, I, and we have whole exercises we take people through. If you're interested, you can come to our office and we can take you through these exercises. But if you can create a focal point in your company and then learn how to inspire others, and use that checklist in here with the top te uh, types of things that uh, other companies utilize that are successful, and then you communicate that clearly and powerfully, and people view you as being charismatic. They love to be around you because you exude success. That's what really can light a company on fire. And most companies don't pay attention to communication that we see very much. They don't pay attention to trying to inspire. All they want to do is get into business and get things done, and they can't clearly identify a purpose. There's these three things in this presentation today are major missed opportunities by most companies. The ones that have been very successful, I wish I could tell you stories, but Apple computers, phenomenal successes. They've got tremendous loyalty. And in closing, the thing I'd like to mention is uh, 
when you get with guys like Steve Jobs and so forth, uh, when you hear your customers saying, or they're loyal, I love this company, I love the products they're selling, I love what they stand for, that's the purpose, I love what they're doing, that's a great win. If you have your employees saying, I love working here, This is, I, I love this company, when you get loyalty from both your customers and your employees and all your stakeholders, your investors, your suppliers and all that, what a power tool in a business. Sadly, most companies never get there. Apple computers did, Microsoft did, uh, Walmart did in the early days, when sat, that's why they became the biggest in the industry. You start watching the patterns and the, their techniques and traits in this presentation today that they all have. And it's not a mystery, anybody can do this. Uh, just remember, connecting is all about others. It's not accidental, it's intentional. And if we don't go out of our way to intentionally do these things, we miss tremendous opportunities. And I appreciate you being online today. And if you guys are interested, I highly recommend you contact us. We can go through and do some modeling exercises through some of these things and help you to more powerfully focus your company than you probably ever thought possible. Great. All right. Uh, we've gone just a couple minutes over, but uh, I'd like to thank Dave Nowak for the presentation today. Um, we are... Uh, um, we are uh, going to be rolling out. Uh, we'll, we'll, next week, we'll get an email out to you on what the topic will be for next week. Um, I hope you guys uh, gained a lot of information. We've got a lot of new people on the call today. Um, love to know. Some of them are uh, just people that called in that we uh, don't know who exactly is all on it. But uh, we appreciate uh, um, hopefully you've got something today that we'll, you'll be able to take back to your companies, to your teams and be able to better communicate with uh, with your employees. So thank you, uh, Dave. This is, a, I think, a two-hour class that we compacted down into 30, 35 minutes. And, uh, and great content. Uh, get out there and share it. We will have this posted on our website next week. And uh, appreciate everyone participating today. Everybody have a great weekend. And we will talk to everybody next week. Thanks, everybody.